hello guys welcome back to the channel this is mr play color right here and today i have an exciting episode it's a, an editing tutorial i just want to show you guys how i edit some of my photos uh, for my events for the weddings or kuchala or introduction in this case this is a kuchala that i did our, a few months ago and yeah i just want us to uh, edit this photo together and let's see what we can achieve so let's go straight into photoshop as you can see this photo right here uh, this is a beautiful lady uh, she dressed really well now this is what we want to achieve this is the after before and after uh, I'll have to be honest with you guys. I am not too much of an editor. I usually don't want to do too much. But I also come from a school of thought uh, that the best photos are those which are not overly edited. Yeah. So we just want to do a simple edit uh, so that we can have this picture look as beautiful and as natural as possible. And also to achieve those nice looking uh, skin tones. So let's get straight into this. And I'll start by uh, disabling or actually deleting this layer right here. So that we can start everything from scratch. Yeah, uh, I would like to mention uh, to you guys that uh, this photo was shot as a JPEG yeah i didn't shoot raw for for this particular event because sometimes i just want to uh sometimes i just want to have a simple neat look uh where i don't really struggle with raw photos you know raw photos you have to do a lot of raw processing which i didn't want to struggle with uh, in this case the first step that i usually do whenever i get photos into either photoshop or lightroom uh, in this case photoshop i want to work on the color correction or light correction uh, this photo is it looks pretty fine uh, in terms of the lighting it's not it's not too bad but we could go ahead and just make a few adjustments so uh, let me uh, make first of all a copy here Control j just to make another copy uh, that's because in case we mess up with the, with this copy we can always have a backup which is the background layer so let's go to camera row camera row for me is the best place to do all color correction or light adjustments so we have here the basic panel uh, which we can use to uh, to correct our white balance um, sometimes you can try to uh, just get the auto white balance you can get this color picker from here and uh, tap on something neutral like here so of course you see it's giving me a green tint uh, which I am not so happy with and that's why everything in editing shouldn't be automatic yeah so i'm going to dial back on these on the tint here because i feel it's too greenish uh to a place where maybe i'm happy yeah so we can turn this off and on you can see the difference the image initially had a magenta look which we have dialed down a bit all right so i think i'm okay with this um i'm okay with this white balance and then we can proceed the exposure looks fine to me uh, I can add a tiny bit of contrast you can already see the photo is starting to uh, to shift uh, I can cut down a little bit of these highlights remember you have to be a good judge of these um, of these adjustments do not go too much yeah otherwise you will begin to see artifacts in your photo as you edit that's very important um okay we can lift the shadows a tiny bit 
Sometimes I lift up the whites. It really depends on the photo because these whites create a punch, uh, a, a really nice punch and, you know, into your photo. And then I'll pull back on the blacks just a tiny bit. So let's look at the before and after. You see, it feels like this photo is already finished. And by the way, you have to be very, very sensitive with, with how you edit. Otherwise, you'll end up spoiling even a photo which was good initially. So you have to be very, very sensitive as you edit. So uh, let me zoom this photo in a tiny bit just so I see. Um, okay. So uh, the texture, I can lift a bit of texture. Texture just helps the skin to have some more, well, the word is texture, you would understand, some more bit of detail. But do not go over overboard with these kind of uh, settings because, yeah, they can make your picture look so artificial. Okay, I'm not really dehaze, not really, okay, maybe like three, the vibrance, I may not even touch it because this photo looks pretty vibrant to me. Yeah, but let's just try and see what happens. Maybe like plus seven or, you know, not more than seven. I think that's okay. So the other bit is curves, you guys. Curves can save your day, especially if your photos are a bit low on contrast. But this for me looks generally uh, good with contrast. But let's try and see. Sometimes I pull down on the on the shadow side just to see what it gives me, and then maybe I can lift on the mid tones a bit, you know, to get that more pop in the photo. You see what uh, what that is doing. Uh, the other situation can be an S kind of curve, but you know you have to be very careful with that. So in this case. Uh, let me just reset this so you guys can see. This is what it, it looked like before. So I just pulled down here on the, remember this side are the shadows and this side uh, represents highlights, yeah? So we pull down on the shadows, just maybe up to nine. You can see the input here is nine. And then the mid tones, uh, just a tiny bit, lifting it just a tiny bit. Yeah, um, I think I'm, I'm happy with this. Let's continue and see which other parameters we can touch up. Uh, this detail, this helps to sharpen the photo. But again, you have to be very careful with these settings. You don't want to overly do it. Uh, your photo can come up as so artificial. So I'll just pull this up to maybe like 30. I don't see much noise in this image, so there's not really any any noise reduction to do, to be honest. This will be maybe, you know, some of you guys have an issue. You like to cram settings and, you know, because you watched a tutorial somewhere where someone is reducing noise and you might think that you have to always reduce noise in your images, but it's not always necessary. You have to be a good judge of of your photo uh, yeah so I don't see the reason to reduce any noise I don't see any noise really okay so let's proceed color mixer now this is one of my favorite areas because I get to color grade I usually do most of the color grade in this in this uh, section right here uh, I like my skin to look have a golden sort of look a natural golden look uh, this photo already looks okay but I can do maybe a few things for example uh, when we come to the hue section uh, this red sometimes I I dial it a little bit into the red into the orange you can see that the skin is turning yeah maybe just look at the lips as reference so if i pull it to the orange side you can see that those lips are changing into orange but also that helps with the skin yeah 
uh, with a with a skin the parts that have that reddish element so you don't want to again do too much of this just a tiny bit uh, also this orange uh, when you play with these sliders you see what they do eh? yeah but now in this case I'm going to pull it a tiny bit even two is enough into the yellow but also again this goes with the initial white balance that you had so uh, you can see negative 10 it has a big impact yeah so if you don't white balance your photo very well uh, you will encounter these kind of issues so let me just take it back to where it was uh, that was uh, negative 10 around there I think with just a, a 1 plus 1 on the temperature okay yeah but let's go back to the to the color mixer so I'm going to come to my saturation and try to balance sometimes when this orange is too much I will dial it back down you can see what it does when you pull it all the way so you want to find a good balance which for me I think around um, around okay negative five maybe okay yeah these are not definite that's why it's very important that you don't cram yeah use your eyes to see uh, what you're doing your eyes are the best designer they will tell you that this is too much or this is you know this is lacking or you, you know you have to to balance it that way sometimes i even dial down on the reds just to have that golden you see how when you dial down on the reds do you see what it does to the skin some of you wonder how do you achieve those really amazing color grades but this is uh, sometimes how we are able to achieve it but of course now in this situation the lips are changing yeah so what i could do with that if i had a copy I should have done that actually to have a copy of this so that i can still retain my red lips uh, i can mask this out but let's just dial down a tiny bit not too much okay um i don't usually go too much into the color grading uh, because i feel when i play with the color mixer here i get all the colors the way i want them to be uh, these are the these are the areas I don't use them quite often unless I really have to like defringing here depending on what lens you use but yeah I don't see any fringing in this photo so there's no reason why I should really stress with that I think I am happy with uh, this picture overall um, yeah now the other thing that I want to do is um, Oh, by the way, you can actually do a, a before and after here just to compare to see uh, where you have started and where you have reached. Yeah. Okay. So this is where we are. The other thing I, I want to do before I leave camera row is to clean these eyes. You can press uh, K on the keyboard if you're in a camera row that is a shortcut for a brush or you could just come here and click uh, this icon right here so yeah uh, i'm going to use this brush to clean uh, i can okay let's brush over the white part of the eye it's not necessary to brush elsewhere the white part of the eye that will be masked as you can see it looks red and then you can either come here I already have a preset which I called uh, teeth white or you know but in in any situation you can just edit this manually for example I can maybe reduce this temperature a tiny bit like minus 11 also the saturation I will take it down to where I think my eyes look okay uh, I think about negative 50 that's fine yeah we would do we, we can use this, that same effect also on the teeth right here but the key
to this is not to overly do it because when you overly do it then it's not going to look good yeah so let's see the before and after you see that all right and then when you're happy with uh, with that you can come and say okay so this is going to open here uh, back into Photoshop so now the other thing that we might do is to just retouch the skin a tiny bit yeah yeah for this particular photo this lady here uh, she had a very good skin there's not too much to, to do uh, but we are regardless going to do a bit of skin retouching now uh, I'll give you guys some tips there are many uh, plugins that can actually do uh, quick retouching for you uh, but there's also the manual way of doing frequency separation let me just show you guys so let me first um, duplicate this layer okay so let's try this plugin that I have it's called skin finer just come here to filter uh, if you've installed it it will be under your filters uh, photo toolbox and then I'll click on skin finer we are just going to do a comparison uh, just for you to see so skin finer has opened let me just make it larger here so you can see it has already done some magic with this photo yeah you see that when I uh, when I I can hold here you see before after you see what skin finer has done before and after yeah but you can also reduce the opacity of that effect I have a preset here which I named play color because you can make your own presets within skin finer and save it so uh, this this app saves a lot of my time because I don't always have to to go ahead to skin retouch every single photo sometimes I'll just do a batch and throw the photos that, uh, that I want to do uh, some skin retouching I'll throw them into this software or this plugin and it will do the work for me uh, but it's important that you you also learn uh, the hard way you you learn um, you know the actual way to actually retouch the skin so uh, I'm just showing you this as a sample so let me just press ok and then yeah it will process as you can see and after the skin will look just fine you see that so what it does it masks out the skin and to do a simple retouch for you if you need to do any further retouching you can go ahead uh, but most of the time this is sufficient it gives you something uh, nice and quick so uh, the other way you could retouch is to go the manual way of uh, using frequency separation uh, you know those things guys but in I don't want to make this video too long I think I'm just I'm just going to uh, just do a few minor things here on the skin uh, for example I want to take out some of these blemishes for example this I can just use the uh, this is the spot healing spot healing brush and just clean out some of these blemishes um, though sometimes the spot healing leaves certain marks so maybe let me try that okay i'll bring it to a size that i think is fine and then uh, you copy and paste uh, you have to make sure your opacity and flow are on 100 uh, but also uh, your your brush hardness should be actually really really soft in fact i should click on soft round here select the soft round brush that's what we should be using okay right uh, but again guys remember you don't always have to remove every single blemish because sometimes what happens 
if you overly remove everything then people do not look natural anymore they they start to look plastic so you have to be very very subtle with with your retouching yeah uh, unless you see that something needs to be uh, cleaned out but in other situations try to leave the skin as natural as as possible okay i think i think we have done something reasonable with this photo um yeah let's see before after okay so you guys can see uh this is where we came from yeah this is where we started and then we did some color grading and then we did some skin fining yeah i think i'm going to leave a, a link in the description if you want to get yourself skin finer it will save your life yeah it will save your life because you don't always have to go through the hard work of overly you know editing uh, you spend so many hours so for some of these photos especially if you're doing batch editing like where you you're editing a function and uh, sometimes this will come in handy i know that some friends some photographer friends discourage these kind of programs but the most important thing is for you to uh, to learn uh, your editing pattern if you're doing high-end retouching then it's important that you go the manual way because that will give you much more precise uh, edits but if you're doing general simple edits then there's nothing wrong with using some of these automated plugins because they help you save time yeah uh, this is ai now trying to uh, to play part in in uh, yeah in our editing work so yeah i feel like i don't want to make this video longer than this but so if i were doing this in lightroom it would pretty much be the same concept if i'm to edit these photos in lightroom what i do i first of all um uh, do a batch processing of these photos in skin finer so they come into lightroom when they, they've already been skin fined yeah that's what i do sometimes and then i'll go to lightroom and just make these light adjustments the way you saw in uh, uh the, the way you saw me do them in in camera row yes so thank you guys for for watching this is how our photo has turned out and after you're done with this you can uh, save there's many ways to save these photos yeah but that's how i would usually do it so yeah uh, let me just show you guys before i completely close so i i edited all these photos in uh in lightroom yeah this is how they looked in lightroom as you can see yeah and maybe just to encourage you guys there's no perfect way to edit you can always improve you just have to keep practicing and getting better yeah otherwise i'll see you in the next video thank you so much for watching if you're new to this channel please consider subscribing and join this family of creatives yeah i'll see you in the next video bye